Hi, and welcome to another episode of McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy, and today we're going to be talking about expanding perfect squares and the difference of perfect squares. This is part of the Year 9 and Year 10 curriculums. During this video, you're going to watch a number of worked examples, and you're going to be able to expand both perfect squares in two different forms, as well as difference of perfect squares. And we're going to do it with a difficult problem as well. So let's get started. So let's recall from our last video how to expand binomial products. I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail here. If you're not sure what to do, go back and watch the previous video. So you recall we had an example, x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 5, and we could expand that using FOIL. Firsts, outsides, insides, last. So our first two terms are x and x makes x squared. Our outside terms are 5 and x makes 5x. Our inside terms are 2 times x, which is 2x, and our last terms is 2 times 5, which is 10. So this is what it looks like when we add all of those together with our expansion. Of course, we've got two like terms in the middle, 2x and 5x, and they add together to be 7x. So this is an um, ordinary binomial product, but we have some very special ones called perfect squares. So look at this one here in the example a plus b and it's all in brackets and then it's simply a squared symbol out the front at the front of the brackets. Now you recall in our last one we had one set of brackets multiplied by a second set of brackets. So this is a little bit different. We've only got one set of brackets now and it's squared. So we call this a perfect square. Now a common error that people um, will do when they look at this is to say well a squared a times a, and I'm going to add that to b times b, which is b squared. So my answer is going to be a squared plus b squared. Now that is a mistake. And let's look at why. Why would that be wrong? Well, a plus b all squared is the same as a plus b times a plus b, because anything squared is multiplied by itself. So let's expand that using FOIL. So let's look at that second set there where we've put those into two sets of brackets. a times a is a squared. And then I've got A times B, outsides, is AB. Insides is B times A. Well, that's BA. And then the last B times B is B squared. So I could actually simplify that because my two terms in the middle are always going to be like terms. AB is the same as BA. It's just in reverse. So really, this expands to A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. And you notice that's very different to A squared plus B squared. There's a whole extra term in there that we forgot about the first time. So definitely don't go about doing perfect squares the way that that common error shows. You need to expand properly using FOIL. So that's what we've just learned there. There's more to it than what we thought when we first had it meet the eye. Now there's a pattern that perfect squares form and it enables us to take a shortcut where we don't even need to use FOIL. And I love shortcuts, I don't know about you, so let's have a look at what that looks like. So we just discovered that when we expand a plus b in brackets squared, it's going to come out to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared when it's expanded. So we've got three terms. They're always going to form a pattern when they're a perfect square. You'll notice that first term is the first term from the original set of brackets squared. And then I take the two terms in the original set of brackets, multiply them by each other, so that's a times b, and then I multiply that by 2. And then my last term, I'm going to square that as well. Okay, so you can see that there, that's the a squared, first term squared. Second term that I'm going to get as my result once I've expanded is 2 times term 1 times term 2. And then lastly, I'm going to have b squared, which is that second term squared. So let's look at this with some worked examples, and it'll become a lot clearer. So if you can see on the right-hand side, I've got your little, your little remembering tool, which is what that will expand to. That's the form it's going to take. So we're going to do this firstly with FOIL, so we can just check that this perfect square works for everything. So x plus 4 all squared actually expands out to x plus 4 times x plus 4 in brackets. And then when I use FOIL, firsts is x times x, x squared. Outsides, 4 times x is 4x. Insides, 4 times x again. And lasts, 4 times 4 is 16. Now, I've got two like terms in the middle, so I need to simplify that a little bit further because 4x plus 4x equals 8x. So my final answer is x squared plus 8x plus 16. Now, let's have a quick look at our memory tool that we've got over there in yellow. Now, with that memory tool, I had to remember first term squared, well, x squared is 
x squared. And then last term squared goes on the end. 4 times 4 is 16. So yes, that's correct. And remember, my middle term is always going to be 2 times the two terms. So 2 times 4 is 8 times x is 8x. And so that's why it works. Now, with my next couple of examples, I'm not going to expand using FOIL at all. I'm going to jump straight to my memory tool and use that. So let's see how that's going to work. So in this worked example, I've got x plus 7 all squared. So I have to remember, I can't just write x squared plus 49. No, there is a third term I've got to remember. So my rule is first term squared, which is x squared, plus 2 times the first term times the second term. So 2 times 7 is 14 times x is 14x. And then I add on my last term squared, 7 times 7 is 49. So if you need to, take a moment to pause and have a look and see how that forms the same pattern. Let's look at another worked example. This time it's a little bit more complicated because it's not just an x by itself at the beginning at this time. It's got a coefficient of 2. So that means the coefficient has to be squared as well. So this time I've got 2x, and that's going to be my first term. It'll be squared. So 2 times 2 is 4x squared. Middle terms. So this is going to be 2 times the first term times the second term. So let's do the first term times the second term first. 5 times 2x is 10x, and we're going to double it, so it's 20x. And then the last one will be 5 squared, which is 25. And you can see that that's the pattern that we've formed there. So this is our perfect squares. But what if that sign in the middle is not a, a, a plus and it's some subtraction instead? Is it still going to work if it's a takeaway? Well, let's have a look. It's also called a perfect squared, and that difference is that sign. So let's expand it again. We're going to use FOIL again this time. So A times A is A squared. At outsides, A times minus B is minus AB. Insights minus B times A is minus BA. And then lasts is going to be negative B times negative B. So remember, negative times a negative is a positive. So that's going to be plus B squared. So that's probably where most people will make a little mistake if they're expanding in this way, is forgetting that negative times a negative is a positive. Okay, we've got those two terms in the middle. They are like terms. AB is the same as BA. We've got one is subtracted and the other one is subtracted from that. So we're actually going to have minus 2ab. And another common mistake people make here when they're expanding this and simplifying is that they forget that a negative take away and that next number makes it even more negative. And some people just use it and cancel it out and that doesn't work that way. So when we've got a perfect square with a negative in the middle, we end up with a squared take away 2ab plus b squared. So we've just found that pattern. That's what it looks like when it's expanded. Perfect squares are going to always expand in this pattern when you've got the negative in the middle. First term squared, take away two times the term, first term times the second term, plus the second term squared. That's because negative times negative gives positive. So this is where these terms come out, right here. So let's have a look at what we've learned so far. You can see we've looked at a plus b all squared and a minus b all squared. Can you see where the difference is when we expand both of those out? You're correct. The only change is going to be that that second term is subtracted from the first term in that expanded solution. So I would suggest you write this down. This is going to be a really good tool for you to memorize. Okay, we're going to do a couple of quick worked examples. So I've got x minus 3 all squared. Let's do this one using FOIL. So I've got the first two terms. x times x is x squared. Outsides is x times negative 3, so that's minus 3x. Negative 3 times x, that's our insides, so that's another minus 3x plus negative 3 times negative 3, that's a positive 9. So if I simplify that, I'm going to have x squared take away 6x plus 9. Now have a look over at the, the right-hand side where I've got my little yellow pattern. We can see it's making that pattern. First term has been squared, that's x squared. Then we've got 2 times the a value times the b value. So we've got 2 times 3, which is 6, times x, so 6x. But it's subtracted, so it's going to be minus 6x. And then on the end, I'm going to be adding the last term squared, which is 3 squared, is 9. Let's do another worked example this time. But this time we're not going to use FOIL. We're just going to jump straight to our answer using our pattern. 
So I've got x take away 2 all squared. So my first part is going to be x times x is x squared. My second part is going to be the two terms multiplied by each other. So I'm going to have negative 2x, but I've got to multiply that by 2 again. So it'll be minus 4x. And then on the end, I'm going to have the last term squared, which will be 2 squared, which is 4. Let's look at that again with something slightly a bit more complex. I've got 6x take away 3y, and that's all squared. So my first step is I'm going to take that first term, which is 6x, and I'm going to square it. Now notice it's got a coefficient this time. So that means the coefficient is going to be squared too. That will be 6 squared is 36x squared. Then I've got that middle term that I'm going to come up with. It'll be 6x times 3, 3y. So 6 times 3 is 18. X times Y is XY. So I'm going to have 18XY, but I've got to double that now because it's multiplied by 2. So it's going to be minus 36XY. On the end, I've got the term 3y. I'm going to square it. 3 times 3 is 9, and y has to be squared as well. So I'm going to be adding that term on the end, plus 9y squared. Okay, so we've looked at perfect squares in two forms. Now it's time for us to look at the difference of perfect squares. Okay, so this form that you can see on your screen, a plus b times a minus b is called the difference of perfect squares, and we call that DOPS for short. And once we do a couple of worked examples, you can see why it's called the difference of perfect squares. You'll notice at this point, there's no squared symbol. So you might be wondering, well, what's perfect about it and what's squared about it? That'll come to light. So this is different to our previous problems. In our previous problems, we had one set of brackets and a squared symbol on the outside. In this situation, we've got two sets of brackets and it looks very much just like multiplying uh, binomials. The first two terms are the same. The second two terms are the same. The only difference that you notice is the signs. In that first set of brackets, they're added together. In the second set of brackets, they're subtracted together. So it's very important to use the DOPS pattern that it must fit this form first. And we will do that check when we do some worked examples. So there's those differences in signs. That's the key difference between what's in each set of brackets. Okay, so let's do this with A's and B's first. We're going to expand it out using FOIL. So if I have A times A, I get A squared. Outsides, A times negative B gives me minus AB. Insides is going to be B times A plus BA, and then minus B squared on the end. Now we know that AB is the same as BA. So if you look at those two middle terms, which are the ones we usually add together, because um, they're like terms and we need to simplify, well, I've got negative AB and then I'm adding AB to it. So that means those two middle terms are going to disappear. Poof, excellent, they're gone. And what I'm left with is A squared take away B squared. Now, this is why it's called the difference of perfect squares because A squared is a perfect squared and B squared is a perfect square as well and the difference is subtraction. So really, the answer is the difference of perfect squares. Let's look at our DOPS pattern. We just discovered that A plus B multiplied by A minus B comes out to an answer when it's expanded of A squared minus B squared. So we lose the middle two terms. It's always going to follow that pattern when it's got DOPS. The first term squared take away the second term squared. So let's look at this with a couple of worked examples. Now I'm going to do this with FOIL again, just so we can test to make sure that this works with numbers. So if I'm going to expand this, I'm going to start with firsts. x times x is x squared. Outside, minus 2 times x is minus 2x. Inside is plus 2 times x, which is 2x. And lasts is 2 times negative 2, which gives me negative 4. So that's what it looks like when expanded. But I need to simplify you'll notice those two terms in the middle are going to cancel each other out because negative 2x plus 2x gives us 0. So my final answer is going to be x squared take away 4. And that is the DOPS pattern. Notice from that first set of brackets, x plus 2, well, my final answer is simply that first term squared, x squared, take away the second term squared, which is 2 squared, which is 4. So you can see that the DOPS pattern definitely works when we use real numbers. So now let's use the next two examples. We're just going to go straight to our final answer using our DOPS pattern. So 2x plus 6 times by 2x minus 6. Now, when I approach a question like this, the very first thing I want to do is have a look and see if I know it's going to fit any of these three patterns I've looked at. Well, I know straight away because I've got two sets of brackets that it's not going to fit perfect squares. 
But I've got the first two terms in both sets of brackets are the same. The second term in both sets of brackets is the same. The only difference is that one has a plus, one has a minus. So I know straight away that's going to be dots. So I can jump straight to an answer. So I look at my first set of brackets. 2x squared is going to be 2 times 2 is 4x squared. Then I put my, my takeaway subtraction sign in the middle and I look at the last term, which is 6, and I square it and I end up with 36. Let's do this something with something slightly harder again. Okay, this time I've got 8x minus 3y multiplied by 3x, 8x plus 3y. So once again, I have to look and see, is this term the same in both sets of brackets? Yes. Now this is the second term the same in both sets of brackets? Yes. Are they different only by the fact that one's a plus and one's a minus? Yes, and it doesn't matter that the first one's a minus and the second one's a plus because it really doesn't matter what order you multiply things in. Okay, so using my rule, let's look at the first term, 8x. If I was to square that, 8 eighths is 64x squared. Subtraction sign, and then the last term is 3y, so I'm going to end up with 9y squared. Now let's look at how this might work with a concrete example. We're going to start with a quick summary so far. These are our three rules, the perfect square rules and the dots rule. You might want to take a time to write this down. And let's look at this with something more of a concrete example, a real life context. I've got a square piece of fabric and there are four equal squares that have been cut out. That's the blue sections. One section cut off from each corner. Firstly, I need to write an expression for the area of the shape that remains. Now, if I was to cut those four blue squares off, you'd notice it would form roughly like a cross shape. Okay, so let's firstly, we want to find the area of that cross shape. Let's find the area of the whole squared. We're told that the length is 20 centimetres, so our area rule for a square is length times length. 20 times 20 is 400 centimetres squared. One removed square... Well, same formula, length times length, which would be x times x, which would be x squared. And we have four of them because we're cutting four squared out. So that's 4x squared. So the area of my cross shape is going to be 400, the big square, take away each of the little squares, 4x squared centimetre squared. Now you'll notice by looking at 400 take away 4x squared, that looks like a dops answer because I've got a squared number take away another squared number. So I know that that is a dops answer. And this is why we call it the difference of perfect squares because we're actually using squares in the picture. We've got a big square, take away little squares. And our answer is big square area, take away little square area. So it's kind of cool. Let's look now at the next part of this question. We've got to write an expression for the area of the square in the middle, and that's shown and represented by this yellow square here. How would I express what the area for that is? Well, I know each side length of that yellow square is going to be the big square, 20 centimetres, take away each of those little squares, and they were x centimetre. So 20 take away x, take away another x, is 20 take away 2x. So that's one side of that yellow um, square. The area of that yellow square then is going to be length times the length, which is going to be 20 take away 2x in brackets squared. Now, remember, that looks very much like a perfect square to me. It's the same thing, and it's squared. We could expand that using foil, or we could just jump straight to our answer. So I know that um, the area of that yellow squared is going to be 400 take away 80x plus 4x squared. And you might be thinking, how did I get that? Remember our rule, first term squared, 20 times 20 is 400. The second term of this answer is going to be made up of both the terms in the brackets times by each other. So 20 times 2 is 40, and then the x, 40x. But I've got to double it, so it's minus, 40, minus 80x. And then the last term gets squared and added on the end. So 2 times 2 is 4x times x is x squared, 4x squared. And that's how we've worked out the area of the yellow squared, and that's our expression. Now remember, we're not asked to solve it and find out what the area is, we're just asked to write an expression. So today we've worked with expanding perfect squares in two different forms as well as the difference of perfect squares. If you have any questions or you would like to request a video or give me a comment, you can do so at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. It's been great talking to you. Have a good day.